I'm selecting one, hold down the shift key, two, three. I'll hit the B key, click and drag, select those as well. And now I'll hit G and X to grab and move them on the Z axis. Let's move them down. Okay. And I'll also select one, hold down the shift key, select two, hit G and X to grab and move them on the X axis. All right. And finally, select one, hold down the shift key, two, three, and four, and hit D and the Z to grab and move them on the Z axis. All right. What I'll also do is select one, two, three, four, select the space here, and I'll hit shift D to create a duplicate of the space. I'll move this one up, let's say at about here okay and now I'll select one two select those two vertices or perhaps select the top one and hit G and X to grab and move it on the X axis alright now I'll hit control L to select link and I'm selecting me my uh, object here my plane here and I'll hit shift D to create another duplicate move it up and now I'll select those two vertices and I'll hit G and X to grab and move them on the X axis at about here. Alright. Now while I'm in edit mode I'll hit Shift A to add a circle. I'll also hit T on my keyboard for the mesh tools here and I'll change the amount of vertices for my circle here from 32 to 16. And now I'll hit R, X and 90 to rotate my circle here for 90 degrees on the X axis. I'll hit E to extrude and S and 0 to scale my extruded vertices for uh, down to 0. And then I'll hit the L key to select my entire circle here. And move over to the mesh tools and I'll click remove doubles. OK. Now I'll hit the S key to scale my circle here down. And then hit G to move it up. And I'll hit S to scale it down even more. And then hit G to grab it and let's put it here. OK. And now shift D, duplicate and put the duplicate here. I think I'll scale down my circles here a bit more. And then select one vertex and hit L to select link and scale them down. Alright. Now I'll hit the tab key to switch from edit to object mode and you can see our frame here. I think it looks pretty nice so far. And what I'll do now is hit shift A and add mesh a circle. Now the circle will use 48 vertices. Type in 48 for the vertices value here. Now I'll hit the tab key to switch to edit mode and hit R, X and 90 to rotate my circle here for 90 degrees on the X axis. I'll now hit the S key to scale my circle down at about here. Now I'll hit E to extrude, right mouse button click to cancel any movement and I'll hit the S key to scale my extruded vertices up. And now I'll hit A to deselect all, A again to select all and hit Ctrl N to recalculate my circle normals to point outside. Alright. Now I need another circle. Hit Shift A. Add mesh a circle. And our circle here will use 56 vertices. I'll now hit the Tab key to switch from Object to Edit Mode. Hit R, X and 90 to rotate my circle, my new circle, for 90 degrees on the X axis. I'll hit the S key to scale my circle down. OK, and S, let's scale it down a bit more. OK. And I'll hit the E key to extrude, right mouse button click to cancel any movement, and hit S to scale my extruded vertices here up. OK. Now I'll hit A to deselect all, and again to select all, and hit Ctrl N to recalculate the object normals for this circle. OK. Now I'll hit Shift A. Add mesh a plane. 
hit the tab key to switch from object to edit mode and hit R, X and 90 to rotate my plane on the X axis for 90 degrees and I'll hit the S key to scale it down. Let's further scale it down, I'll hit S to scale it and I'll also hit G and Z to grab and move my plane and I'm moving the vertices as you can see since I'm in edit mode and I'm doing this to keep the uh, origin of the object at the center of the world. Let's zoom in. I'll hit the A key to deselect all, hit B, click and drag, select the bottom vertices here and I'll hit G and Z to grab and move them on the Z axis. Alright, now I'm selecting the top vertices. Hold on the shift key to select them both and hit G and Z to, to grab and move them on the Z axis. At about there. Okay. Now I'll hit the A key to deselect all, A again to select all, and I'll hit S and X to scale my plane here on the X axis. Alright. Now I'm hitting the Tab key to switch from Edit Object Mode. And I want to add a material to my plane. Move over to the material plap to the material panel and hit new for a new material. And I'll call this when plane underscore one. And for my material here, I'm bringing the diffuse density up to one, bring the specular intensity down to zero, and change the mid value here under the shading tab to 0 0.2. Okay. Now I'll hit Shift D to create a duplicate of the plane. You can see it right here. Hit the right mouse button to cancel any movement, of course. And I'll hit R and Y to rotate my plane here on the Y axis. And I'll rotate it for 5 degrees. You can see at the bottom left corner the value. I want a unique material for the second plane, so I'm clicking this little 2 icon. And I'll call the second plane material, plane underscore 2. Now that I have a unique material for this plane, I want to change the diffuse color, click the color and I'll make this one darker. OK. Now shift D for another plane and R and Y to rotate the uh, duplicate on the Y axis. Rotate it for 5 degrees again. And I want the unique material for this one as well. Click the 2 icon. And I'll call the material here plane underscore 3. And once more I'll change the diffuse color and make it slightly darker. OK. Shift D, another duplicate, another copy, and RY, we want to rotate it on the Y axis for 5 degrees. We also want the unique material. This will be called plane underscore 4. And now that we have a unique material, a single material for this object, I can change it without affecting the uh, rest of the objects or the materials. And I'll make this one slightly darker as well. Now Shift D and RY. To rotate on the Y axis, we want another duplicate, click the 2 icon, this will be part underscore 5, and change the diffuse color, make it uh, darker, OK. Shift D, R and Y, rotate for 5 degrees on the Y axis, a unique material for this plane. This will be plane underscore 6, and I'll change the diffuse and make this one also darker. Now shift. D, R and Y, unique material, the material will be plain underscore 7 and we will also make this one darker. And I'm creating some sort of gradient here and then shift D and R, Y, a unique material for this one as well. And this will be plain underscore 8 and bring the diffuse color, make it darker. All right. And once more, shift D, R and Y, a unique material for this object. This will be plain underscore nine, and I'll change the diffuse color, make it even darker. Okay. Now I'm selecting all my uh, plain objects here, holding down the shift key to select them all. And I'll hit Ctrl J to join them in a single object. And as you can see now, they're uh, all part of the same object. And Blender also uses all the materials assigned on the on the planes here. Okay, now I'll hit 7 on my Mary Keypad. And what I'll do is hit G and Y to grab my planes here and move them 
slightly on the y-axis I'll set them to 0, 0.010 you can see at the bottom left corner the motion I'm applying on the local on the global y-axis okay now I'll hit one on my numeric keypad to switch the front of view and you can see our plane is here positioned and what I'll do now is that I want to add some logic to them I'm splitting my 3D view, changing the top viewport into a logic editor and hitting the N key to make the properties go away and we want our uh, object here, the plane.011 to have an always sensor, we want to always have some motion applied to it as always you have to click and drag and connect them both to make it all work and we always want our uh, object here to rotate on the Y axis and let's set the Y value here at uh, from 0 to minus 10 and I'm using the Y value because I want my uh, object here to rotate around the Y uh, axis like that so I'll expand my 3D view here and in order to see how this all works I'll have to add a lamp, I'll hit shift A and add lamp, I'll add a point lamp I'll hit 7 on my numeric keypad to switch to top auth view and hit T to grab my lamp let's move it to the side and back a bit and I'll hit 1 again and I'll hit the T key to make my toolbar here go away and I'll also change my, my shading mode for my viewport here from solid to texture okay and I also want to apply some materials here for my frame and objects so I'm selecting my frame I'll hit the tab key to switch from object to edit mode hit A to deselect all and A again to select all and I'll hit Control N Control N to recalculate my object normals to point outside and I'll add a material to my frame here click this little icon and I'll hit W and select the white material for my frame and I'll also add the white material to my circles here click this little icon and I'm hitting W and selecting white and this one and click hit W and select white now if I hit the P key you can see that we have our frame here and we have our planes rotating in the center okay and I think this looks pretty nice I'll hit the escape key to move back to my 3d view and I'll move up a bit and selecting the frame and hitting the tab key to switch from object to edit mode and I'll select my uh, uh, my uh, horizontal uh, vertices here select 2 and hit ctrl L to select linked and I'll hit S and Z to scale them on the Z axis I want to make those lines here thinner and select this one and then hit Control L to select link and I'll hit S and Z to scale on the Z axis I'll scale them down alright now I'll hit Tab and hit the Del key the comma key on my numeric keypad to frame my frame and I'll now hit the P key to take a look through the Blender game engine alright this one looks good I'll hit the escape key and it's time to save it click file save as and I'll save this one as heads up display underscore one alright okay now moving on into uh, shaping and building our heads up display and the first thing I'll do is uh, to modify my frame here a bit I'll hit the tab key to switch from uh, object edit mode I'm selecting those two vertices here and I'll hit G and Z to grab and move them on the Z axis and what I want is to make my frame here even thinner I'm selecting one hold on the shift key select the second and hit G and Z grab and move on the Z axis and about here and let's also take care of those I'll select this one G and X and this one G and X to move it on the X axis. Alright. Now also select one, hold on the shift key, select two and hit G and X to grab and move them on the X axis. 
and I'll move down here, select those two, one, hold down the shift key to select them both and hit G and Z, grab and move them on the Z axis. And I think we're good at about there. Alright. Now I'll also move up and hit Ctrl R for loop cut here. I'm on the top right corner. Click to uh, confirm the loop cut, move it to the side. And then I'll hit S, X and 0 to scale my vertices here on the X axis down to 0. And you can see the result here. I'll also let's select 1, 2, 3. And let's hit D and Z to grab and move them on the Z axis. I'll move them up a bit more. OK. And now I'll select 1, hold down the shift key, select 2. And I'll hit G and Z, grab and move them on the Z axis. And about here, and I'll select this one. G and Z, grab on the Z axis, and I'll move it up. And about here. Okay. Now I think I like my frame better now. I'll hit the. Oh, one thing more I want to do is hit the A key to select all, hit B, click and drag, select those two. And I'll hit G and Z, grab and move them on the Z axis, hit the A key, then B, click and drag, select those four vertices here, G and X, I'll grab and move them on the X axis. And again, making now my frame here a bit thinner, I think it'll look better that way. And now that we're done and modifying the frame, I'll hit Shift A and add text. R, X and 90 to rotate my text here for 90 degrees on the X axis. And moving over to the text object data, click this little F icon. And first thing I'll do is click Sender to center my text. And I'll change the size of my text here to 0 0.1. And hit the Tab key to change the text. And let's set this one to FD. And for this uh, X. All right. Hitting the Tab key to switch from Edit Object Mode, and I'll hit G and Z to grab my text and move it on the Z axis. Let's zoom in. G and Z grab and move it on the Z axis. At about here. And move over to the text options. I'll add some character spacing here. Set it from 1 to 1.1. And for the text here, what I'll always do uh, in order to make it work correctly in the Blender Game Engine is move over to the Object menu and move up and convert to Mesh from Curve MetaSurf text. OK. Now I'll hit 7 on my memory keypad to switch to top both of you. And I'll hit G and Y to grab my text and move it on the Y axis. We'll move it away from my uh, from our frame here. Let's set the... Uh, you can see the value here is set to minus 0 0.0005 along the global Y axis. And I'm doing this because I want my text to be in front of the frame so I can see it. And time to add material to our text here. Move over to the material panel, click new for a new material. I'll call this one text underscore 2 because I believe I somewhere have a text underscore 1 material. And I'll bring the specular density down to 0 and change the diffuse color and I'll make it darker at about here. Alright. Looking good so far. And I'll now hit Shift A to add mesh another plane and hit the tab key to switch from object to edit mode and hit R, X and 90 to rotate my plane here for 90 degrees on the X axis and I'll hit the S key to scale it down zoom in and hit S to scale it down once more OK and now hitting Z and Z to grab and move it on the Z axis and once more, I'm moving my object here, my vertices here, when, while in edit mode, because I want the center of the, the origin point of the object to stay at the center of the world. Now I'll hit the Tab key to switch from Edit Object Mode, 
and I want to add a modifier to my plane here. Move over to the modifiers panel and click add modifier and I'll add an array. I'll also add an empty, hit shift A and add an empty. And as you can see here, the empty is empty.008. Remember this one. And I'm selecting my plane here and moving over to the uh, array modifier. I don't want to use a relative offset for my array, but I want to use an object offset. Click object offset and click for the uh, menu here. And I'll hit E and M. Let's see our empties. And I want the array to use the empty.008 to move the cloned objects. So now if I select the empty, select it and hit R and Y to rotate on the Y axis. You can see that the uh, array now follows the rotation of our empty. Now back to our array, select the plane. And we have the array modifier here. I'll increase the count until we have a full circle here. And as you might imagine, since we're rotating the plane here for, for uh, 5 degrees, we'll need to set the count to 72 to complete a 360 degrees rotation. Okay, now our array here is done. I'll hit apply to apply the array. And as you can see, if I hit the tab key now, we have the planes here. They're all part of a unique object. And I'll now hit control tab for the mesh select mode and select face. And I'll also move right here, change the pivot point to individual origins. And I'll hit the S key to scale my planes here down. Okay. Now hitting tab to switch back to object mode and I'll select my empty, right click the empty to select it and I'll hit X to delete it. I don't need it anymore. Now I'm selecting my planes here. I'll add the white material to those as well. Click right here, hit W and select white. I also want some uh, animation here for my planes so I'm splitting my 3D view. and. I'm changing the upper part, the upper 3D view into a logic editor and I'm hitting the N key to make the properties here go away and I'll add an always sensor and a motion actuator for my planes here click and drag to select them both I always want some motion for my object, for the selected object and I'll set the Y rotation here from 0 to 0 0.5 I'll expand my 3D view and hit the P key to take a good look. And as you can see, we have the inner planes here rotating pretty fast, and I have the outer planes here rotating slowly. I think it looks pretty nice. I'll hit the escape key to move back to my 3D view, and now I'll hit Shift A and add mesh a circle. I'll hit the T for the mesh tools here and change the vertices for my circle from 32 to 6 and now hit the tab key to switch from object to edit mode and hit RX or perhaps hit control tab for the mesh select mode click vertex and now hit RX and 90 to rotate my uh, vertices here and hence the circle for 90 degrees on the X axis I'll now hit the S key to scale my circle down uh, about here and I'll hit the E key to extrude right mouse button click to cancel any movement for the extruded vertices and I'll hit the S key to scale them down ok I'll also hit A to deselect all A again to select all and control N to recalculate my object normals to point outside now I'm selecting 1 holding down the shift key 2, 3 and 4 and I'll hit Shift D to duplicate and X to move the duplicated vertices here on the X axis. And now I'm selecting 1, hold on the Shift key, selecting 2. And I'll hit S, Z and 0 to flatten out my vertices. And then I'll do the same thing on the top vertices, select them both. And hit S, Z and 0 to scale them on the Z axis. Now I'll hit L to select Length. OK, and I'll hit the S key to scale my, my plane here, my uh, face down, 
at about here and I'll now hit shift D we want to duplicate and I'll move my duplicate on the x-axis let's move it here okay now I'm hitting tab to move back to object mode and I'll also add the white material to my circle here okay and I'll also add some text hit shift A and select text R, X and 90 to rotate my text for 90 degrees on the X axis move over to the text options click this little F icon and I'll first of all change the set the alignment here to center and I'll also change the size from 1 let's set it to 0 0.3 Let's change the text. I'll hit the Tab key and change it to F and V. Hit the Tab key and I have to change the size again. Let's set it from 0 0.3 to 0 0.2. OK. I'll hit G and Z to grab and move on Z axis. And let's see now if we can add some offset. OK. I'm uh, setting the offset to a value below zero and as you can see that makes my text here thinner okay I like it and I'll add the white material to my text here click I'm hitting W and select white and what I'll do now is I have the text selected I hold down the shift key and select my uh, circle and I'll hit G to grab them both and move them at about here and then I'll select my circle now I also want to add some animation for my circle here but I do not want to add an always sensor that takes us to a motion actuator and I don't want to have the same style of motion we have for these planes here and there is another way to add motion to our scene in the Blender game engine and let's see how we can do it. I have the circle here selected and I'll hit the I key and insert the rotation keyframe for my circle. And I'll move over from frame 1 to frame 150 and then hit R and Y to rotate my circle on the Y axis for 360 degrees ok and now I'll hit I again and insert another rotation keyframe let's see what we've done here I'm splitting my 3D view and changing the top part into a graph editor now what we have here is the let's see it better is the rotation graph and I'll expand the rotation and first thing I'll do is uh, get rid of the X and Z rotation, we don't need them and select the Y rotation and I'm using keyframes here to add animation to the Blender game engine because as you can see the Y rotation here has this nice uh, graph it starts slowly then speeds up and then adds and uh, moving slowly again and truth is that you can't achieve this kind of motion by only using Blender Game Engine and that's why we're adding the animation using keyframes. Time to make Blender recognize this animation and use it in the Blender Game Engine. I'm switching this top view here into Logic Editor and hitting N to hide the properties and we have the circle here selected. We want an always sensor and this time we'll add the action actuator and connect them both from the sensor to the actuator and what we want Blender here to do is to always add the animation we've set for the rotation for the Y rotation for the circle here so we're selecting the action this is the action that the uh, circle.062 uses it's the animation we set for the Y rotation and if you do remember we have the end frame at 150 and the start frame is set to 1 so Blender will always 
play the animation from 1 to 100 to 150 using the action actuator and only thing I'll change now is change the option here from play to loop end I'll expand my 3D view now again and select the frame and hit the tell key the comma key to frame my frame and now if I hit P for the Blender game engine you can see the animation here at the bottom left corner for my circle here you can see how different it looks compared to the plane rotation here that use the motion actuator now I'll hit the escape key I need to do one more thing select the text here and move over to object and you could see as I played in the Blender game engine before the text here looked odd all we have to do is convert to mesh from curve meta surf text and now I'll hit T to make the toolbar here go away and hit P to take a look and I think it now looks pretty nice so you can see we have a different motion here for our circle I'll hit shift A to add text hit the R, X and 90 to rotate my text here for 90 degrees on the X axis I'll hit the tab key to change the text I'll type in let's type in F, H, N and as I said before I'm using sharp letters here just to keep my uh, my poly count low and dash T V and Z and hitting tab to switch to object mode move over to the text options let's first of all center the alignment for our text and then change the size I'll set it to 0 0.1 and perhaps 0 0.05 OK, and let's move our text. I'll hit G to grab it. Let's move it at about here. G and Z grab and move it on the Z axis. I'll, I'll add some character spacing here, set it from 1 to 1.1. And I'll also select the text and add the white material to this one. Hit W and select white. OK, so now if I hit the P key, and as I said before, you can see how weird the text looks. You can see at the bottom left corner, what you have to do is while the text is selected, move over to Object and convert to Mesh from Curve Metasurf text. And now I'll hit the P key, and you can see that it all works and looks nice. Alright, so I'm hitting Escape to move back to my 3D view, and I think it's time to save again click file save as and I'll save this one as heads up display underscore 2 and click save as blender file okay now moving on with our uh, heads up display here and I'm selecting my frame and hitting the tab key just want to work with it a bit more and again I'm uh, modifying my objects from time to time for example I want to make those horizontal lines here even thinner and I'm selecting this vertex and hit L to select linked and then hit S and Z to scale on the Z axis okay and now I'll move closer select this one hold down the shift key select this one and hit G and X to grab and move on the X axis alright I'll select one, hold on the shift key, select two and hit G and Z. Grab and move on the Z axis. Alright. Now I'll hit the tab key. I think my frame looks pretty good so far. And I'll now move to the fourth layer. Click this icon to move to layer four. And I'll hit shift A to add mesa plane. I hit the tab key to switch from object to edit mode and hit RX and type in 90 to rotate my plane here for 90 degrees on the X axis. And I'll hit the Z key twice to switch my uh, viewport shading mode to solid. And I'll hit the S key to scale my plane here down. And then I'll hit S and X to further scale my plane down on the X axis. 
and about here okay now I'll hit Control R over here I want to look at I'll scroll my mouse wheel up for two look at and I'll hit S and Z to scale my look at on the Z axis all right and Control R again I want to look at here scroll my mouse wheel up once for two look at and hit the left mouse button to confirm. Now I'll hit S and X to scale those two loop cuts on the X axis. Alright. Now I'll select one, hold down the shift key, two, three, and four, and hit X to delete faces. I'll move down here now for a while. Hit Ctrl R for loop cut, click the left and then the right mouse button to place my loop cut right at the center here. And I'll hit Ctrl R for another loop cut. Move this closer to the center. And I'll select one, hold down the shift key, select two. And now I'll hit Z and Z to grab and move on the Z axis. Alright. Now, as you can imagine, this is another part of our uh, heads up display. I'll hit Shift A and add mesh a plane. Again, hit the tab key. R, X and type in 90 to rotate this plane for 90 degrees on the X axis. I'll hit the S key to scale it down right about here. And now I'll hit S and X to scale it on the X axis. Perhaps scale it a bit more on the X axis. S and then X right about here. Now I'll hit G and Z in edit mode. And I'm moving my vertices up. And what I want here is to have the origin of the object to be at the bottom. You can see those bottom two vertices here and the origin point is right in the middle. Now I'll hit the tab key to switch from uh, edit object mode and hit G and Z to grab and move my plane here on the Z axis. And as you can see right now I'm moving this in object mode because I want the origin to stay at the bottom of my plane. Now I'll hit the tab key to switch from object to edit mode, hit A to deselect all, hit B, click and drag, select those top two vertices, and I'll hit G and Z to grab and move them on the Z axis. And I want those two vertices, those two top vertices to be at the uh, middle of my frame here. Okay. Now I'll hit the tab key to switch from edit to object mode, and I'll split my 3D view. And I'll change the top part, the top 3D view here, to Graph Editor. And for my plane, I'll hit the I key and insert a scaling keyframe. Okay. I'll expand the scaling and I'll delete the X and Y axis. Hit, uh, select them and hit X to delete them. And I am deleting them because I want my uh, plane here to be scaled along the Z axis only. Okay. Now we have the Z scale here. And what I'll do is hit N for the uh, graph editor properties. Move down and with my Z scale selected I'll click add modifier and I'll add some noise. And what Blender does here is that it applies some noise using this value to my graph editor. And as you can see, the Z scale now uses this uh, nice noise pattern. Okay, I'll expand my options and I'll bring up the scale because we want our uh, plane here to have a smoother motion in between the keyframes the frames and I'm increasing the scale and I'll also oh, let's leave it as it is let's try and look how this plays out and I'll be playing this uh, using the uh, the play buttons here I there's no using playing this as you can imagine in the blender game engine we will bring this animation in the blender game engine later on and I'll increase the strength just by a bit and I'll hit G and Y to grab and move my uh, graph here on the Y axis I'll move it up and let's see how it plays 
Okay, pretty nice. Now I have my uh, object here. It follows the uh, noise here for the Z scale animation. And what I want to do is bring this animation over to the Blender game engine. Because right now, if I hit the P key for the Blender game engine, you can see that nothing happens. Blender needs to take this motion and bring it into the Blender game engine. So I'm uh, changing the graph editor here into a logic editor. And I'll hit the N key to hide the properties. And I'll add an always sensor to my plane. We have the plane.014 here selected. And I'll add an action actuator. Okay, so we always want this action to take place in the Blender game engine. And the action here allows us to play a part from, uh, from some animation. And I'm clicking and selecting the plane.014 action. And I'm selecting the noise animation we've, uh, we have built before in order to make it work in the Blender game engine. So you also have to set some start and end values here. I'll set the start to 1 and let's set the end to 180. I want for the Blender game engine here to use the frame 1 to 180 part of the animation. And I'll, change, I'll just change the play option here and select loop end. So when the animation here ends, it'll loop. Okay. I think this is settled. Now I'll hit the P key to see how it looks. And as you can see, we now have the animation in the Blender game engine. Pretty nice. Now I'll hit the Escape key to move back to my 3D view. And select the... And we have the... Uh, plane here selected, I'll hold down the shift key to select the frame, select them both and I'll hit G and X to grab and move them on the X axis OK and now I'll hit shift D for a duplicate, duplicate my frame and plane and hit X to move the duplicate objects on the X axis now I'll select uh, my plane here and let's move over to the graph editor for this plane and they now use the pretty much the same graph so they'll be sharing the same motion those two planes and in order to fix that I'll move down to the noise options and change the phase okay now they use different phase for the noise animation and I'll hit the P key to see how they look and I think they look pretty nice. OK. Now I'll hit the escape key to move back to my 3D view, expand my 3D view. And I'll hit shift A and add mess a final plane. I'll hit the tab key to switch from object to edit mode. Hit R, X and 90 to rotate my plane here for 90 degrees on the X axis. I'll hit the S key to scale it down. Hit S again to further scale it down. At about here and now I'll hit S and Z to scale my plane on the Z axis all right and what I'll do is hit the tab key to switch from edit to object mode I'll hit Z to grab my plane here and move it okay Z and Z grab it and move it on the Z axis all right and now I want to add a modifier to my little plane here. Move over to the modifiers panel, click add modifier and I'll add an array modifier. I'll end check the relative offset, check the constant offset and we want the clones to move on the Z axis here. So I'll set the Z value, let's set it to 0 0.1 or perhaps 0 0.05. Okay. And I'll just increase the count. Let's set it up to, let's say, let's set it up to 15. And now I'll hit Z and Z, grab on the Z axis. Let's move it up a bit. All right. Now my uh, array modifier is cloning my plane. Looks pretty nice. I'll hit the apply 
to apply the the array to my object and now I'll hit shift D and X to create a copy of my planes and move them on the X axis ok now if I hit the P key you can see how my bars here look and I think they look pretty nice I'll hit the escape key to move back to my 3D view and I'll hit shift A to add text R, X and 90 to rotate my text here for 90 degrees on the X axis I'll hit the tab key to switch from uh, object to edit mode and I'll type in E, A, N, V and I'll hit the tab key and move over to the text options click this little F icon for the text object data and first thing I'll do is center my text of course and then I'll change the size let's change it to 0 0.1 and let's make it even smaller smaller to 0 0.0 let's set it to 0 0.03 G to grab the text move it down OK, and I'll make it slightly bigger. Let's set it to 0 0.04. OK, now I'll hit G to grab my text and move it a bit at about here. And now I'll add some character spacing, change it from uh, 0, uh, from 1 to 1.2. And I think this looks pretty nice. I'll hit Shift D to duplicate my text here and X to move the copy on the x-axis I'll hit the tab key to modify this text and I'll type in T Y N and K OK tab key again and while my text here is selected and as I said before in order to make it work in the Blender game engine we have to move over to object and convert to mesh from curve metasurf text and you can also select the uh, other text here and hit alt and C for the convert to options and select mess from curve meta surf text. OK. Now I'll have to uh, group my objects in order to move them to the third layer where the heads up display is. And as I said before, you have to remember one thing, and this is to never make an, an animated object apparent. The animated objects can only be tiles because. Uh, when they animate, if they have a child object, they will affect it with their animation. So I'm selecting the frame and hold down the shift key and select the frame on the left. Ctrl Z, let's select the frame. And then I'll hit Ctrl J to join them in one object. And then I'm uh, selecting my little planes here, my arrays here, and then the text. 1 and 2 and then as again I'm holding the shift key select the frame and hit ctrl P and set parent to object now I'll select the animated bars here hold down the shift key select 1 hold down the shift key and hit ctrl P to set parent to object and select the right bar here and hold down the shift key and click the frame and hit ctrl P and set parent to object now I'll hit B click and drag to select my objects here all my objects and I'll hit M and I'll move them over to the third layer I'll also move to layer 3 and I'll also add the white material to my objects click uh, move over to the material panel and hit W for the white material and let's apply the white material to my bars here to my uh, objects OK, and now I'm selecting the text, click this icon and hit W, select white. Right mouse button click, select the text, click this icon under the material tab and hit W and select white. And once more, and for the right bar here, W and select white. Now since the frame here is the parent, we don't have to uh, click and drag and select all the objects to move them along. I'll just select the uh, the frame and hit the G key to grab and move. 
I also think I'll scale my bars here down and I'll hit the Z key to grab them. Let's move them at about here and perhaps let's scale them down a bit more. All right. And again, hitting the Z key to grab and move them at about here. All right. Now I'm right, I'm right clicking the frame to select it and hitting the Del key on my numeric keypad, the comma key. And I'll change my viewport shading here to texture. And let's hit the P key to see how it looks. All right. And as you can see, we have some interesting, some nice motion here for our heads up display. We have the bars dancing. We have the hexagon on the bottom left rotating using some uh, keyframed animation. I think it looks pretty nice. And final thing I'll do is hit Shift A. I'll add mess circle. I'll hit the T key for the toolbar here for the uh, circle options and change the amount of vertices from 32 to 6. And I'll hit Tab and hit Rx and type in 90 to rotate my hexagon here for 90 degrees on the x-axis. I'll hit the S key to scale it down. And I'll hit E to extrude, right mouse button click to cancel any movement for the extruded vertices. And I'll hit the S key to scale them up, hit A, deselect all, A again to select all, and hit Ctrl N to recalculate the object normals to point outside. Now I'll hit the Tab key to switch from Edit Object Mode. I'll also add the white material to my hexagon here. And I'll hit Z to grab it. Let's move it down and to the side. And now I'll zoom in a bit. And hit Shift D for a duplicate. OK. Shift D once more, another duplicate. And Shift D. Let's put it here and Shift D. Let's put this one over here. And I think it looks pretty nice. OK. Now I'm having this uh, circle, this hexagon here selected. I'll hold down the Shift key, select 2, 3, 4, 5, and then click the frame to select it. And hit Ctrl P and set parent to object. Now I'll hit Shift A to add some text. R, X and 90 to rotate our text for 90 degrees on the x-axis. I'll hit the Tab key and type in D, K and X. Hitting Tab again, move over to the uh, text options, text object data. I'll center my text and then I'll change the size. Let's change it from uh, 1 to 0 0.1. And now I'll hit the Z key to grab my text. Move it at about here. Let's zoom in. And I'll hit the Tab key. Let's change our text a bit. I'll set it to K, T, V. OK. Tab key to switch back to object mode. I'll hit Z to grab my text and move it at about here. And perhaps add a Z here and then grab it and move it on the X axis. All right. Once more, I'll add the white material to my object. All right. And I think we're good. I have the text here selected. I'll hold down the uh, Shift key to select a frame and then hit Control P and set parent to object. And I'll pretty much do it with the rest of my object. I'm selecting this dark text here and then hold down the shift key to select the frame. Control P. Set power into object. And then remember we don't want to have animated objects as parents. So I'm selecting the uh, moving circle here. Holding down the shift key and let's make it a child of the frame. And then select the text. I want to modify my text a bit. I'll zoom in, hit the Tab key. And we have a bit of an issue here. I'll hit the A key to deselect all, hit B, click and drag. 
and I'll hit S and X. Let's scale those vertices here on the X axis. Okay. And then I'll hit A to deselect all, A again to select all, and I'll hit Ctrl N to calculate my object normals to point outside. Alright. So I have this text here selected. I'll hold down the Shift key to select this one, and then select the frame, and hit Ctrl P to set parent to object. Alright. And now I'll select the frames here. Hold down the Shift key, click the frame, the main frame, and hit Ctrl P to set parent to object. And select the inner circle, hold down the shift key, select the outer circle, and then select the frame. These circles here have no animation, so I'll hit Ctrl P to set parent to object. And now select the animated planes here, hold down the shift key and hit Ctrl P to set parent to object. And then hold the, uh, click the uh, gradient planes here, and hold down the shift key to select the frame and hit Ctrl P and set parent to object. Alright, now what we want to do now is select the frame and hit the G key and have every object on our heads up display following along. Alright, so this looks pretty nice. I think it's time to save it. Click File and let's see how, if we have. Oh, we have to apply to make the uh, text object here a mesh object. Click the object menu and move up, convert to mesh from curve meta surf text. Alright. And I think we're good as it is. I'll hit the P key. Let's take a final look. I think it looks pretty nice. I'll hit the escape key and click file, save as. And I'll save this one as heads up display underscore three. Okay. And then click save as blender file. Alright, now we'll uh, bring the heads up display to the first layer where, uh, where everything else is in this part. But before we do that, I'd like to uh, make some changes here for my parts, for my objects. And I'm selecting those and changing the pivot point to medium point. And I hit the S key to scale them down. And I'll also select my circle here, my hexagonal uh, shape here, and hit the S key to scale this one down. I'll also scale down the text. Okay. And I'll move right here. Uh, right mouse button click to select my text here. And I'll hit the tab key to switch from object edit mode. Click this vertex here to select it, and I'll hit the L key to select linked. And then I'll hit the X key and select the little vertices. I'll now hit the A key to select all and hit G and X to grab and move on the X axis. Now tab to switch back to object mode, select this text, hit the tab key. To move to edit mode, select this vertex. And I'll hit the L key to select linked. And then hit the X key and select the little vertices. Now I'll hit the A key to select the remaining vertices, the remaining letters, and hit G and X to grab and move them on the X axis. Alright. Hitting the Tab key to switch back to Object Mode. And I'm selecting the circle here. And I'll hit the Tab key to switch from Object to Edit Mode. Hit Shift D for a duplicate and then hit S to scale my duplicated vertices down. And now I'll hit the A key to deselect all, hold down the Alt key and click here to select the inner row of vertices. And I'll hit S to scale them down. Alright. Now hitting the Tab key to switch from Edit to Object Mode. And I'll move to the Material panel. And we have the 55 number here and this means that the white material is now assigned to 55 objects. I'll click it for a unique material, a new material for this object, and I'll call this one white underscore wire. And what I'll do is change from surface to wire. Okay. I'll also select my planes here, and we'll, I'll add the white wire material to them as well. So I think this looks pretty nice so far. And 
Another thing I want to modify is the planes. And if I hit the P key now to take a look through the Blender Game Engine, you can see that my planes here move way too fast. So I'm splitting my 3D view and I'll change my upper 3D viewport to a logic editor. I'll hit the N key to hide the properties and we have the motion here, the simple motion here, the uh, Y rotation for our object and this always happens in Blender Game Engine and what I do want here is to change the Y rotation value here from 10 to 5 and by doing so I'm slowing my object down so now if I hit the P key, you can see that it now rotates slower and I think uh, we can clearly see it, we can see it better now. So hitting the escape key to move back to my 3D view, I'll hit the A key to deselect all and hit B, click and drag, select my objects and now I'll hit M and select the first layer. And now that we've moved the uh, heads of display objects to the first layer, you can see them right here. Now I'll select my camera, right mouse button click to select the camera. And let's take a look at the transform options, the location, the rotation. We have the uh, X location here set to 9, the Y set to minus 8, and the Z set to minus 1. I'm selecting the frame, and let's set the X to 9 the Y to minus 8 and the Z to minus 1 and as you can see now we're trying to align and position the heads of display to the camera selecting the camera again right mouse button click to select it and I'm checking the rotation now we have 92 for the X minus 10 for the Y and 50 for the Z axis let's use the same values for our uh, frame for our heads of display frame we have 92 for the X rotation and minus 10 for the Y rotation if I'm not mistaken and 50 for the Z rotation. And as you can see in order to align our uh, heads of display here to the camera we also have to rotate it for 90 degrees on the X axis so I'm hitting Ctrl Z and I'll set this one from 92 down to 2 rotate it for 90 degrees on the x-axis okay and now you can see that the heads-up display uses both the uh, camera position and the camera rotation now I'll hit G Y and Y again to move my object on the local y-axis and I'll move it slightly away from the camera and now I'll hit 0 on my numeric keypad to switch to the camera perspective view and the frame is selected and now I'll hit the S key to scale down my frame and let's scale it a bit more at about there okay so now we have the uh, heads of display here brought uh, in the scene I have the uh, object the frame here selected I'll hold down the shift key to select the camera select them both and now hit Control P and set parent to objects okay and we're uh, making the camera here a parent of the frame uh, because we want the frame to follow the camera as a heads up display so selecting the camera now and what I do want is to uh, bring the circle here from the heads up display uh, roughly at the center of my hexagonal object so I'll change the rotation values here and since the frame and the heads of display is a child object it will follow the camera. So let's set the uh, X rotation here up from 92, let's set it up to 95 and I'll bring the Z location, the Z rotation, excuse me, down 